Hello everyone, this is Latif and I'll be your guide throughout my series of Super Street Fighter 4 tutorial videos titled Learn Street Fighter. Now in this video, I'll be teaching all the basics of this game at an introductory level, but hopefully as this series continues, we'll be going through much more advanced concepts and strategies. Now what is Street Fighter 4? I think Street Fighter 4 is one of the most fundamentally easy 2D fighting games out right now. I think the mechanics are easy to understand which in turn makes it easy to pick up. Now we're gonna continue on to the character select screen. As we can see, Street Fighter 4 features 39 characters to choose from. For this tutorial, however, I will go ahead and pick Ryu. Throughout the series, he's been known to be a well-rounded character, which will serve to explain the basics in this tutorial. After selecting your character, you have the option to customize your character with a variety of selections. You may change the custom, color, personal action, and win quote. Every character in this game has two ultra combos to choose from. Depending on who you are fighting against, you might want to consider which ultra to pick from. In this tutorial, I will go ahead and pick Ultra 1. For the second character, since it's training mode, it doesn't matter which character to pick up, but I will go ahead and pick Ken since everybody knows this character. Now throughout this series, we will be always explaining everything through training mode, so by default, we will be always playing on training stage. Now for the rules of Street Fighter 4. The rules are very simple. So basically, you have two characters and each character has a life bar, as you can see on top of the screen. So the default rules for a single game is two out of three rounds, and the first player who reduces the other player's life bar wins the round. In a single round, there are 99 seconds on the in-game clock. If the clock ticks down to zero, the player with more life shall take the win. And a draw occurs when both players' life bars are at the same value, when the clock reaches zero, or when they deplete each other's life at the same time. Alright, so now I'll quickly run through the game screen. At the top of the screen, you can see the life bars for each player, where player 1 is on the left side and player 2 is on the right side. In between the life bar is the in-game clock. In training mode, the clock will be set to infinity, but in real matches, it will be set to 99. On the bottom of the screen, there are two gauges for each player that can be filled during the match. The long gauge that is split into four parts is the super combo gauge and the round gauge that is connected on the end is the revenge gauge, more commonly known as the ultra gauge. Next, we're gonna talk about the basic controls. So in Street Fighter 4, the controls feature an A-way directional input with the traditional six button attack input. In this series of tutorial, I'll be using Razor Fight Stick to explain all concepts and strategies. Also, I'll be explaining all controls as if I'm on the player one side, which I will be always playing on the left side. If you're on play 2 side, please reverse all left and right movements. Movement is controlled using the 8-way directional stick, as we mentioned earlier. Moving the stick right will move your character forward, moving it left will move your character backwards. Moving the stick down puts your character in a crouching position, and moving the stick up will cause your character to jump upward. You may also jump diagonally forward and backward by moving the stick diagonally upward to the left and right. I'll explain about moving the stick diagonally downward to the left and right later on this video. Now using the default controls, attacks are inputted using the 6 buttons on the arcade stick. There are 3 punches and 3 kicks. Punch attacks are located on top row, as we can see here from the stick. And these are the punch attacks, these are the kick attacks. And each punch and kick have 3 different levels of strength, starting from the left column are the light attacks, and the middle column are the medium attacks, and finally on the right column are heavy attacks. Same thing goes with kicks. Commonly found on most home arcade sticks is the 7th and 8th button on, on the right side. These two buttons are commonly mapped to 3 punches at the same time and 3 kicks at the same time. Now I'll continue on to normals. Pressing any of the attack buttons individually perform a normal attack. You may use this attack while standing, crouching, jumping in any direction you want. Also every character in the game is able to sweep their opponent by crouching heavy kick. Normals are the basis of formulating combos, which we'll be going more in detail in another video. 
Now we're gonna talk about unique attacks. Some characters have moves that are not considered normals because they require special input. You can expect these to be performed by pressing a directional and a button. So for Ryu, he has two unique attacks. The first one is what is called Solar Plexus Strike, which you do forward, heavy punch. And the second one is called Collarbone Breaker, which you do forward, medium punch. Also, I would like to mention, add on another note, is if you press the blue fist indicate light punch the the yellow fist indicate medium punch the red fist indicate heavy punch same thing with kicks this is light this is yellow and, which is medium and this is heavy so you can see the colors blue is light yellow is medium red is heavy now by inputting now we're gonna move on to special attacks by inputting the directional stick and attack buttons in certain combination you are able to perform what are known as special attack. I'll show you reuse special moves as an example. So this is what's called the fireball. And this is what's called the hurricane kick. And we got his dragon punch. You can find input commands for all special moves on the command list in the start menu. So if we press start, we go to command list. These are the whole cast for the game. We go to Ryu. You can see that they show you all the command moves for this character. Inputting the command for a special move during certain normal moves allow, allows you to cut short or cancel the normal move and quickly go straight into performing the special move. Using canceling skillfully is one way to create damage in combination. So I'll show you guys an example if we do heavy punch into fireball, heavy punch into uppercut, we could do heavy punch, heavy punch into hurricane kick, we could use our normals too to execute certain attacks as well and combinations. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is blocking. In Street Fighter 4, it is very simple to block attacks. Pushing the stick away from your opponent allows you to block their attacks. You can block high standing attack and low crouching attacks. High and low blocks can block specific attacks, but not every attack. For example, you cannot block a throw. You will need to carefully quickly swap between the two types to block all incoming attacks. Also, you cannot block while you're in the air. For example, I'll show you guys an example here. Let me set the training dummy position to jumping all time and he's guarding all the time. So he's jumping. If I hit him in the air, he cannot block as you guys saw. Let me go back and put everything back to default. Now we're gonna talk about dashing and back dashing. Press the directional stick twice toward your opponent in quick succession to perform a forward dash. Or press the directional pad twice in quick succession away from them to perform a back dash. Or a backward dash. Dashing allows you to get close to your opponent quickly or to drop back and reassess the situation. The speed of a dash and back dash varies from one character to another. As you attack your opponent, you, you will slowly raise their stun meter and eventually they become stunned. The stun meter is invisible and cannot be seen in a real match. However, since we're in training mode, there is a box on the right that shows damage, combo damage, max damage, max combo, and there's the stun meter. Now I'm going to attack Ken to show you guys how it looks when a character gets stunned. As you can see, the more I hit Ken, the higher the stun meter gets. Now, once he's in that position, it basically gives you a chance to get free damage off of your opponent. The only way to recover from stun is to press the directional stick and other buttons as fast as you can. With time and improvement, you will be able to grasp and feel when the opponent will be stunned. Next, we're gonna talk about throw and throw escapes. When standing close to your opponent, press the light punch and light kick button simultaneously to throw your opponent. You can change the direction you throw your opponent by pressing left or right on the directional stick. You can prevent yourself from being thrown by pressing the command for throw when your opponent begins to throw you. This is called a throw escape. I'm gonna show you guys an example of that. I have already recorded Kent to throw me, so... 
I'm going to put it on playback so that I can take the throw. As we can see, this is what's called the throw escape. Just press the throw button, button at the same time of your opponent when he presses it. Some characters can perform throws while jumping. You cannot perform a throw escape from air throws. Now I'm going to go back and set these back to default so I can explain the next step which will be about recovery. When your opponent attacks, knock your character to the ground. You can press down on the directional stick or any two attack buttons simultaneously the instant you hit the ground to perform a quick recovery. Let me show you guys an example of that. It doesn't have to, it, it has to be at least two buttons or more is fine, it doesn't matter. Um Alright, let's do this. So this is not doing a quick recovery. Now I'm gonna do down as soon as I hit the ground. Or press two buttons. Or even three buttons. A successful recovery reduces the amount of time spent prone on the ground and make it easier to respond to the next incoming attack. Some attacks, such as throws or sweeps, do not allow a recovery to be performed. So, I'll record my opponent to sweep me and I'll try to get up and we'll see how it's that gonna work. Now let's put it on playback. As you can see, even though if I press down or two buttons, three buttons, it doesn't work out. It has to be like sweep or throws. Now I'm going to set it back to default, and I'm going to talk about our last thing for this tutorial video, which will be about personal action. When standing, you can press the heavy punch and heavy kick buttons together to make your character perform a personal action and taunt your opponent. This action in and of itself has no special properties. Some players see this as disrespectful and refrain themselves from taunting each other. However, some players may use a taunt and attempt to provoke and aggravate their opponent. This will conclude our first episode of this series. Next episode we will talk about focus attacks, EX moves, super combos and ultra combos. Thanks for watching and I hope you all enjoyed the first episode of this series. Please send any questions you have over the Razor Academy and I'll make sure to answer personally. See you guys next episode.